chapter 10, 25 through 37. Uh, I'm sure someone, somewhere through life, each one of us has come upon someone that's needed some help in some way. That we might have asked them if there was something we could do that would make a difference. It might help them. Tile with the knives, different makers. Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan tells us what we can, it tells us that we all can make a difference. You and your preacher can make a difference in the lives of others. We can make a difference where we are. We can make a difference in the world, beginning right here in our world. We must understand today that we don't have to be perfect, rich, highly educated, in good health. We don't have to be someone special in the church. Regardless of who we are or where we live or how often we fail. We can make a difference. A difference in the lives of others. In Romans 6, Paul says, We are to become instruments of righteousness in the hands of God. In Luke chapter 12, he says, We are to become living sacrifices. The Bible is filled with men and women who made a difference in their world in a very big way. Noah made a difference saving himself and his family in an ugly and immoral culture. Dads, papas, when we make a difference in and for our family, our children and our grandchildren, Moses made a difference by leading Israel out of the Egyptian bondage to the wilderness and to the promised land. How many souls are we leaving home to the promised land? Daniel, he made a difference by standing for the right, for standing for what was right in the in the face of big odds. Can God count on us to stand for Him wherever we are? At home, at school, at work, on vacation. Esther made a difference. Saving her people by yielding to God's divine providence. Are we sensitive to God's providence? Or are we just stumbling through life each day? Thinking all of life is just an accident. Murray made a difference by allowing God to use her to bring his son into the world. Who will be, who, who will be bringing Jesus, who will we bring Jesus to this week? By allowing God to use us in spite of her inconvenience or embarrassment. Barnabas made a difference in the early church by encouraging others. Are we making a difference by encouraging others? <coughs> or are we constantly finding fault and criticizing the behaviors of others? Sometimes all it takes to make a difference is a word of encouragement. I'm going to be given three reasons why we need to become a difference maker today.
because our world depends on it. Our, our world would never survive if people do not help one another. God made us for relationships. We need each other. He created us to be dependent upon each other, one another. Just think about this for a moment. Where would this world be without the good Samaritan? Where would our world be without the Mother Teresa's today? Who would help the dying, the poor, sick, and afflicted? Perhaps more important, where would we be without those who helped us? I was going to mention someone tonight. I thought I wouldn't, but I believe I will anyway. But I don't know where me and Deb would be today if it wasn't for one certain person. A member of his church for many years. I know there's many people here that's made a difference that has gone on to their reward. But Sister, Sister Elsie Hyde made a difference in my life. She was loving. She reached out and gave us a start. And I'm sure there's many more that's done things for people here. That's gone on to their reward. And it's just uh, something that you will never forget. Parents, who have we? Who brought us up in the ways of the Lord? Grandparents who helped us with our educations. Elders and other church leaders who guides us, leads us in the path of righteousness. Great teachers who took special, special interest in us. Ordinary people who reached out to us, understanding us, encouraging us, forgiving us, lifting us up when we were down and out. Without compassionate people like the Good Samaritans, our world would turn into chaos. We need to be different makers because our world depends on it. We need to become different makers because it fulfills life. Jesus never told his audience how the good Samaritan felt when he, back, when he went back to the end. But you and I know, no doubt, he probably felt good. Because he had done something useful and good for his fellow man. Imagine how Paul felt when he finally delivered the money to the famine-stricken church in Jerusalem. If we knew we were going to die, would we find someone who needed help and save them? When we help others, we in turn help ourselves. There comes a sense of security, satisfaction, and fulfillment when we take time and the energy to make a difference in the difference in others' lives. This is why God created us. We are His workmen, created to do good works. And it does feel good when we do something good. Helping, serving, and saving others. We should be different makers because God expects it of us. 
Jesus did say, blessed, happy are those who show mercy. He said, the Father will reward those who give to the needy. Scripture says, do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. In the great sheep in God's judgment, Jesus tells us that our judgment depends upon how we, how we treat others in need. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came and visited me. I can personally relate to all of these that I just mentioned. I'm sure most of you knew that I was gone for a while. And when you're away from home, I'm sure most of the military men can relate to what a letter means. Or maybe just a phone call, which I received plenty of letters, some phone calls. People was concerned. But there's only one who ever got done something spiritually for me. And that was Amy Vaughn. She would send me these little tracks that used to be out back, and I'd read about faith. Repentance, confession, baptism. It really helped me in my life. I guess she done the most important thing for me as I was a boy. Some of the last words that Jesus spoke on this earth are found in Matthew 28. everything that I have that I have commanded you and sure I am with you always even until the end of the age he commands us he commissions all of us to go out into the world out in our neighborhoods our workplaces <coughs> making a difference in the lives of other people notice something. Jesus doesn't say, go, go, and save or serve yourselves. He doesn't say, go and make as much money as you can. He doesn't say, go gather as much material things as you can. He didn't say, go search for as much pleasure as you can find. He doesn't say, Go and do whatever you want to do. Jesus said, go, make disciples. Make a difference in the life of others by serving them, helping them, and sharing the gospel with them. Why should we make a difference? Because our world depends on it. Because our life, living, our, us living a good life, a fulfilled life, depends upon it. Because God expects it, even commands it. What kind of people does God use to become different makers? He uses ordinary people like you and like me. Many of the people 
who made a difference in the Bible were simple, ordinary people. They had some of the same feelings, doubts, problems we have today. Not all of them were well known. Not all were that talented. Not all were qualified for the work that God called them to do. They were not all spiritual giants in the beginning. God is not looking for special, talented people. He's looking for ordinary people like us. We must not resist our calling. When Moses stood in front of the burning bush, he was glad to learn that God was about to rescue the Israelites. Yes, finally, it's true. Time for Israel to be delivered. Time for them to enjoy the life God had promised. Time to go home to the promised land. But when God said, come Moses, I'll send you to Pharaoh, immediately Moses began to make excuses. Make excuses. The man most people consider to be the Israel's greatest leader. Tried his best to get out of being a difference maker. And many of us here tonight are giving God some excuse for, for not finding our place in the church, this church, and becoming a difference maker in this church here at East Point. question. Are we spiritual, comfortable with our excuses? God will equip us. Some great biblical different makers felt unqualified for the task. Moses said, who, me? Not me. I'm not a good speaker. What would I say to fire road? Who would I say sent me? I'm not equipped. Church, do you remember what God said next? What is that in your hand? Throw it on the ground. And the shepherd rod became a snake. Put it Put it up. Moses did, and it became a shepherd rod again. Put your hand under your coat. Take it out. And Moses did. And when he took it out, it was slippers. Put it back in. And when he removed it the second time, it was healed. Then Moses said, well, I'm not a good speaker. I can't lead people. God said, Moses, who made your tongue? Who made your mouth, your lips, your eyes and ears? God was making a point that if he could create and sustain the whole universe, he could and will equip, equip us to become different makers in our world. The Apostle Paul, who probably brought more people to Christ than any other person on earth, was not a great speaker. Not the best of his knowledge. Listen to him as he writes to the church of Corinth. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you with what? Weakness and fear and in much trembling. My message and my preaching was not with wise and persuasive words, but with what? A demonstration of the Spirit's power. Paul. Paul was not 
an individual that naturally commanded attention. He was not a take charge kind of man, but God used him to make a difference in his world. David was so such a great difference maker that, that he's mentioned more than any other person in the Bible. But he started his life as a shepherd boy. So unqualified that his own father even forgot to mention him when Samuel came looking for a king for Israel. Rahab was used by God, even though she was a prostitute. Mary was a simple, humble, pleasant girl. She became the mother of Jesus. Were the twelve apostles qualified to start a movement that would sweep the whole world and turn it upside down? Were they qualified to start a movement that would last forever and ever? I really don't think so. Listen to what the people around them thought, thought of them in Acts chapter, chapter 4. They saw that these were unschooled, unlearned, unqualified, ordinary men. They were amazed. But they took note that these men had been with Jesus. God doesn't always use people who are wise, influential, who have a no noble birth to do His work. He uses ordinary men and women just like us. First Corinthians one twenty six through twenty eight. Brother, think of this. What were you when you were called? Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many, many were noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lonely things of the world and the depressed things, and the things that are not to you loose. Can't pronounce that word. These things, they are. The truth is, God often selects the most unlikely people of this world to be his difference maker. And God chose you and me the people here tonight at church, all of us to make a difference in our world. Are we willing? Some great biblical different makers never expected to, to be used by God. Nor did others, nor did others expect God to use them. In our text, everybody expected the priests and the Levites to stop and help the disabled and wounded man. The priests and the Levites, that was their job. They passed on by. They showed no mercy and compassion. It was expected of them. No one, not one person, expected the Samaritan to help. Everybody expects to see the preacher at the hospital in the nursing homes this week. It's their job. What they don't expect to see is 
touches you and me. Church, nothing touches the heart of the community any more than to see people out of the pews. Taking time to make a difference in the lives of the poor, the sinners, the down, down and out, the weak. people of the world, they're not impressed when your preacher comes calling on the residents. They are impressed with you. Those who stop on the road of life and serve the wounded. You are the good Samaritans in this world. Great difference makers are those who have been given a second change. Some difference makers in the Bible got off to a wrong start. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach against the, their wickedness. But he went in the opposite direction and ended up, ended up in the belly of a fish. God gave him another change. And he made a difference in the, in the destiny of, of Nineveh. That's what I need, another chance. David, he fought great battles for God and his people. He roamed rights and stood firm for the truth. But then he slid into bed with Bathsheba and got her pregnant. In an attempt to cover up his immorality, David lied and murdered. But God gave him another chance. The truth is, we've all disqualified ourselves for some ugly sin. But you see, our God is a God of second chances. He loves to forgive and restore us to a place of service in his kingdom. Paul was one of the elite of the elect. But he denied Jesus, not once, but three times. That night when Peter left the courtyard in tears, he probably thought that, his, that he was finished as a disciple as a different maker. But Jesus offered forgiveness and gave Peter a second chance. A few weeks later, he was found preaching the first gospel message from Pentecost. <coughs> he took the gospel to the Gentile house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. What a difference Peter made in the early church. How many of us has been guilty of denying Jesus in front of our friends, our families, or our work partners. We must know that this does not disqualify us from becoming a difference maker. Different makers must never give up. We can't we must not forget the promise of Jesus in Revelation 2.10. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. We all know those who have had a great start in their spiritual journey. But the start is not as important as the finish is. Are we making a difference today, right now? We must keep on keeping on. <coughs> Faithful unto and until death. God is not judging us on our past successes or mistakes, but on our present purpose. Paul said, forgetting the past. 
pressing on to the goal. How many here tonight has ever heard of Jim Greengrass, if anyone? On the opening day of baseball season, in 1954, Milwaukee Braves played the Cincinnati Reds. Two rookies were in that game, the guy named Jim Greengrass. He batted four times and hit four doubles. I think that was a pretty amazing start. But nobody remembers him. The other guy started his career the same day. He struck out all four times. Hank Aaron had a slow start, but he were remembered. He was remembered. Church, how we start does not matter. What matters is how we finish. I have people who wanted to tell me about what they used to do in the kingdom of God. How involved they used to be. What is important is what we have done. What is important is what have we done today? Are we faithful in making a difference today? Perhaps you think Perhaps you think you don't have the time or the energy. Perhaps what you've done, you might not think is very important. It was. God always knows and always rewards. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Church, it doesn't matter how we start, but how we finish. I, was, I would just like to encourage each of you to continue to make a difference. Never give up because God will reward you in this life and in the life to come. There is no doubt that different makers are laying up treasures in heaven. My prayer is that God will help us all to become different makers. We're about to sing an invitation.